Hello everybody, it's your boy N here. I'm coming at you guys with another YouTube video. So in today's video, it is going to be a build guide on the new and the improved Hydroid Prime. So without further ado guys, let's get right on into today's video. Oh my god, we just heard Audis make a pun. Oh my god. Right guys, so first of all, Hydroid after this update, known as Abyss of the Gas is insanely busted. Let me teach you how to make Hydroid stupid powerful. So let's get right on into it. First of all, guys, I'm going to go on over the shards. Now for the shards over here, I've done one Tau Forge shard for strength. And then the rest of these Crimson shards are also for strength. So as you can see here as my base, I have 145 power strength. Now, I do have one shard for energy max, but you can change these shards up. My recommendation would be having one shard for casting speed for the tidal surge ability. Having one or maybe two shards for energy max to keep your energy up and kicking. Because as you can see here, 225 energy with one energy shard is not very promising. And I would also recommend using this on strength because Hydroid is now strength based. So people, let's get on into the config. Now for the aura slot, I am going with Brief Respite. That works with his second ability and let me show you how this all comes together. So let's just keep going. The next mod I'm going to be using is Umbral Intensify. Now Umbral Intensify is, you know, this Umbral Intensify. You cannot go wrong with that. It's just more power strength, which is what this build needs. Now pushing the strength further is going to be Blind Rage. So as you can see, we're at 288 power strength, which is very, very good, especially for this third ability that we're going to get into. Now for the next mod, we are going to go with Equilibrium. So... This has been reworked recently along with this update and this is, is just become a very, very good option instead of rocking Arcane Energize. So that is what we're going to go with next. Now the next thing we're going to need is going to be some duration. So we're going to go with Prime Continuity with that one. Now the next mod we're going to go with is going to be Adaptation just for an extra bit of survival, which is good. But let's uh, get on to the next mod. Now for the next mod, we are going to want to throw up our range a bit. And if I can spell correctly, we're going to want to throw a stretch onto here. Now, as you can see, we've got three mod slots empty and two arcane slots empty. So what are we going to throw in here? So for the first thing, I am going to recommend Cunning Drift for a little bit of extra range. Now you don't have to use Cunning Drift and you could also get away by using uh, Power Drift. So any Drift mod is a perfectly good option here. So Endurance Drift or Power Drift, if you want to get a little bit more power out of the Plunder, Power Drift it is. If you want to get a little bit more range and have the ability just work a little bit better, you know, in terms of the range, Power Cunning Drift it is. Now, as you can see here, we've got two mod slots empty. Now, Hydroid is essential to play with at least two Augment mods, in my opinion. Now, I love the Rousing Plunder Augment, which gives 50% uh, max corrosive damage and armor. So, it increases your armor and your corrosive damage even, even further. Now, for the next uh, Augment, this is completely up to you. If you want to have the Viral Tempest on, using the Hydroids first, which will also 100% armor strip, using that with Viral will give the enemies more damage and armor strip them, setting them up to be plundered and for you to get a loads of armor and loads of damage that way. Now, the second option is using Tidal Impunity, which basically as soon as you press your two, you are immune to all status and it costs less energy to cast. So this is quite literally Rolling Guard, except it's cool water animation, which Rolling Guard does not have. Now, you could also rock Pilfering Swarm, which will give you even more drops. So more health drops, more energy drops, and that will also apply for your Equilibrium over here. Now, this is a good ground to play on Hydroid. Now, you could replace one of these augments for Streamlined, for example, for a little bit of extra efficiency, because as you can see here, this is not very good on your efficiency, so it is a little bit of a kicker there. However, this is going to be the config I'm going to be using, just because I'm going to be doing this for Seal Path. Now, I am going to make a level cap build guide for Hydroid, so please do stay tuned for that soon. 
Now for the Arcanes, I know I said that uh, Equilibrium is a replacement for Arcane Energize, but having Arcane Energize in itself is just very, very handy on this build, especially because we've got a little amount of energy and we also have low efficiency to go with that. Now for the next Arcane, I am going to recommend Malt Augmented because once this maxes out and you get yourself up to around 340 strength, this is going to make your plunder even more powerful and you're going to get more damage and more armor out of this. Now, I do want to make one more quick recommendation and that is going to be your Parazon and your Focus Tree. So for Focus Tree, I do recommend running Madurai for the Sling Strength. So that will give yourself 40% more power strength. And for the Parazon, it's optional, but I do like to run uh, Power Drain, which after a Mercy Kill gives 50% strength to make this more powerful. It's just optional, no need for anything like that if you don't want to. Now, we've not even used a Subsume on this. That just goes to show you how good Hydroid's base abilities are now. So guys, let's go into Simulcrum and I'm going to show you how stupid and broken Hydroid has become. Okay, so people, we are now in the Simulcrum. So, I'm going to spawn 20 Corrupted Heavy Gunner XMI and I'm going to show you how stupid Hydroid is. So, let's just get that and let's just get, make our way to the enemies. Now, the way I'm going to be playing this is going to be like this. Using my first ability to armor strip these enemies. So, as you guys can see, a lot of them have been armor stripped. Then from here, I'm going to cast my three for plunder. Now, as you can see here, I've got a lot of armor and a massive 750% damage buff. Now, my Tenet Cycron is a very capable weapon. But as you can see with this, it'll just melt the Overguard. And being, being that Tenet is a uh, beam weapon and a chaining weapon, this is just melting enemies left, right, center. Now, would this apply to uh, the other way that you can play this game? Absolutely. However, I want to quickly show you what Tidal Surge does as well. So with Tidal Surge over here, I'm just going to unpause the enemy AI. So if I get hit, I get damaged and I, I'm in a spot of trouble, I can just Tidal Surge and all status and effective stuff like that is just not going to apply to me. Again, over here, I would have been taking significant damage there, but Tidal Surge just does not apply to me because we are now officially built different because Hydroid is a gangster. Now, with this, I would also recommend using your fourth ability. Using all your abilities as Hydroid is just a lot of fun. And using your Tidal Surge when you are in a sticky situation is ideal, just like this. And it's also so nice to see that now that my Kava, whenever my Kava does go down, my Kava is just going to self-recover. And if you want to help it and speed it up, then you can just go and revive your Kava too. This update is honestly so goddamn cool for that. So guys, now I'm going to run on into Steel Path and I'm going to show you what Hydroid does in Steel Path. This frame is amazing and Hydroid is definitely going to become one of my top played frames for this update. Okay, so people, we are now in Steel Path with Hydroid. So, let me show you how all of this is going to go. So number one, use your one. Number two, use your three. And now you've got a insane amount of damage and insane amount of armor now the way the ability plunder works is the more enemies you infect with corrosive and with power like this means the more armor and more damage you get and it is also based on strength too so it's always good to have that now as you can see from here i am quite literally relaxing as hydroid not a problem in the world and i'm not even being hit my health my armor and my shields is all just sitting up there, pristine, gold, and all of that. Now, if I want to keep using the plunder, it's just going to keep getting more and more powerful, which is why I recommend strength with Hydroid, because he is now strength-based to make this even, even bro more broken than it already is. So now, guys, as you can see here, this is just average Hydroid gameplay in Steel Path, which is quite crazy to say. So as you guys can see here, we've hit the border of 3,000 armor and 825% damage. Now, as you guys can see from my uploads, the last video I uploaded was a video on the Stug. Now, bear in mind, had I run that Stug with the Hydroid from this video, I probably would have been able to kill a lot more at level cap. But just the fact that this exists and the fact that Hydroid's armor and damage both come from his third ability is honestly stupid stupid good 
and just goes to show you how Hydroid is just insanely viable as a Warframe to run for Steel Path, Level Cap, Cascade, any high level endurance sort of thing, Hydroid is capable enough now because this update is just that flipping good. This just goes to show, even with the Acolyte, you are very much able to armor strip the Acolyte with Hydroids first. So, as you can see, the Acolyte is getting into there, so we're just going to have to put a one bullet onto him. And the more he stays in there, he will basically get armor stripped eventually. It is a little bit finicky with armor stripping Acolyte with this, but there is a way to do it. I just quite haven't... I just haven't figured it out yet perfectly. So if I do, there will be a pin comment in this video. But as you could see with that, I literally two-shotted the Acolyte because of the amount of damage buff coming from this Hydroid config, which is just silly. Now, I urge you guys to try replicating this Hydroid build and see how far you can push it. Like I said, I'm going to be working on a Hydroid for level cap, so we will see how that all goes. So guys, that has been this video on Hydroid Prime. I do hope you have enjoyed. If you did, please do drop a like. If there's any other frames or a new content that you would like to see, please do leave it in the comment section below. There is also a link for my Discord server in the description and a Patreon if you would like to support me like that. But anyway, guys, that's been this video. Hope you have enjoyed. If you did, please do drop a like and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.